I'm Gwen Ryan and I'm the Sculpture Conservator at the Hirshhorn Museum and Sculpture Garden. The Hirshhorn Museum is the branch of the Smithsonian that houses primarily the modern and contemporary collection. So you'll find things from early 20th century spanning all the way up to last week. We have two parts of our collection. We have that that's housed indoors and then we also have our outdoor sculpture garden um, where you will find uh, some of the most prominent artists of the 20th and 21st century. Contemporary artists still work with bronze and stone, however they also incorporate a lot of unusual and unconventional materials. And you'll find things like chocolate or um, pollen or potentially art with live insects. There's a wide range of materials that you could find and they're not necessarily intended to be used for artwork in the first place. So our role as a conservator is to look at that and say, how can we continue to have this artwork last into posterity, even though the materials themselves have inherent issues with their own longevity. An example of an artist working with materials that weren't necessarily intended to be incorporated into artwork and to last into the centuries is Paul Tech. He was working in the late 60s with latex. In 1969, he produced this piece, uh, Fish Man, and adhered to the surface are cast uh, replicas of fish, also cast out of latex. So the materials degraded to such a degree that we already have loss of a couple of the fingers. And you can see the, the internal material that's supporting the latex, but it's just so brittle that it's, that it's broken right off. You know, I think we might need to consider about his face being rather sunken in and distorted. And um, I don't know if there's anything that we can do to sort of correct that. It's a very delicate area. There's already a lot of tearing and um, yeah, repair work that needs to be done. You can see there's really no flexibility in the material anymore. One of the first steps of our project with Fishman has been to work with scientists at the Smithsonian's Museum Conservation Institute um, to do some analytical work on the material. Um, we've taken samples um, such as this cross-section um, which shows how the rubber is degrading. Um, it has a very brittle exterior surface while on the interior you can see the original color of the material. It's also much more flexible on the interior. When we approach the conservation of a work that is employing really unusual or unconventional materials that might have an inherently low um, lifespan, you know, we're talking just maybe even a couple decades, we have to consider what the message or the intent of the artist is. Is it really about the original material or is it about the experience of viewing the piece? What part of the artwork is um, important for us to preserve when it comes to something like rubber or latex that only has a, a lifespan of a few decades we do have to weigh preserving it which would mean keeping it in an isolated dark environment versus having it be out on display putting something on display will naturally shorten its lifespan but if that means that people get to see it then isn't that sort of the point <laughs> 